Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of my access control tutorial. Uh, in the first video, I unboxed one of our new AC42s and I told you about my plan to replace my original controller AC41 with this one. You'll see it here in front of you. And while I did that, I redone some of the cables and the elements that will help me test it. So for the duration of the next videos will actually play around with these elements to understand if things such as pressing a rex or triggering a fire alarm will actually do something as you see here the controller is already uh, mounted i removed some of the cutouts to allow me to run cables so from the bottom i have a power cable for ac coming in here I have my internet cable going to the bottom of the controller and also I uh, found one of the backup batteries which I can use for power outage testing. For some of these elements I already, I already installed actual readers so I have a uh, newer generation Verkada reader and on the bottom an older AD31. Uh, I have a MacLog running, a actual Rex and also a power controller. Um, I'm going to speak to you more about that in a follow-up video, but if you're using very powerful maglocks, then the AC42 will not actually be able to supply that power itself, as in wet. So all you need to do is run it dry, leave this toggle on none, and then rely on the power supply or the controller uh, to power the maglock. For uh, certain ports, let's say um, number two here, I actually use just a regular LED to simulate a maglock. It is in the normally closed, thus it gets power as we speak. And as I trigger the lock, you'll actually see that the system state changes and the power is dropped for a couple of seconds. And for things such as REXs and DPIs, I just use regular switches to simulate a door opening and somebody pressing a button. Now that the controller is up and running, uh, the flashing light went from orange because out of the box it's going to update itself, does that on its own, you don't need to do anything, uh, into a solid blue, meaning that the controller is currently connected to the Verkada cloud. At this point, it obviously doesn't belong to anybody, so I uh, fired up command and going in within the devices tab, I'll just simply add it. I'm going to be using the serial number here. Uh, you can just copy it from the controller itself. There is a sticker there. There is also a QR code, so if you want to actually use your camera, you can do so. Uh, the serial number is also present on the box, but uh, to be honest, if you order multiple Verkada devices, you're better off just putting the order number because that will not only pull all the serial numbers but also the licenses associated to it. As this is my home, I'm just going to use the serial number which I copied earlier and I'm going to click add. You'll see here confirmation that the controller was picked up. It is a four door controller. It automatically picks up the name of, of the site and all I need to do is click activate. And before the controller goes live, you get presented with a simple menu to allow you to either run it as a standard wired controller or as a controller supporting Schlage or ASA Abloy Aperio wireless locks. At the moment of this video, a controller can either support wireless locks or wired locks and there is no ability to run them side by side on the same hardware. I'll leave it at standard. The site is already home, the location, I'll just say ground floor. You'll see here that you can actually add multiple buildings and different levels as well. So this is to keep everything neat as you scale your access control deployment. And as for the device name, I'll say main AC42 controller. The time zone itself is very important because again, if you miss this, if you put something wrong here, then all your reporting will actually be skewed. So Remember, with Verkada, you don't need to bring your NTP server. Everything is done for you. Uh, all you need to do is when you activate devices to put in the right address and the right time zone uh, so you get accurate results when looking through the logs. The activation was successful. Just to validate that everything is up and running, I can actually see 
both of my controllers, the one that I swapped over and the new one. The swapped one is marked as red because it's currently offline. Command still allows me to configure it. That's a good thing about it. You don't actually need the devices up and running to start changing some of the settings. While the new controller is marked as green, so everything is working as per the solid blue LED on it. And although I'm going to discuss this in a future video, the intercom also appears here because um, if you're not aware, uh, it can also serve as a single door controller. So on the back of it, it has enough ports and capabilities to connect to a Vercada reader, a DPI and a Rex and be used by uh, the employees coming in and out. The main advantage is that instead of wiring your front door to an AC42, you can do so directly into the intercom and save yourself some money and cabling costs. So besides seeing that the intercom is up and running, I can click into it and you see that at the moment I don't have any doors configured. That's actually the subject of my next video. And then going in within the settings, I can see the local IP address and the Mac. That's great for um, troubleshooting, for example. I can see that the firmware is up to date. Remember that the Vercada devices do update themselves, so you don't need to run around with a USB um, thumb drive and do it manually. It's all taken care of on your behalf. I see that it's correctly associated to the site and the location that we set up in the previous workflow. And scrolling down, I get to understand that currently there are two Vercada card readers assigned to it. That's a common question. How do I need to configure the card reader? It's actually very simple because once you wire it in, uh, the access controller will pick it up automatically and will mark it as green. So obviously my wiring that I've done is correct. Last but not least, I also have three buttons, one to identify, so that will flash the LED. Very, very useful if you're doing some remote troubleshooting and you want to make sure that the person on the other end doesn't, for example, disconnect the wrong controller. A restart button and a decommission that will delete the access controller and make it again available to be added in the organization of your choice. And that concludes the video. Again, we discussed the initial provisioning and making sure that that went on all right. In the following video, I'm going to show you how to configure a door.